Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Gabriel's today. A few words about our outdoor service. You might know that we are on the edge of some railroad tracks. And so our rule here for worship is if one person is speaking when a train comes past, we'll ask that person to just pause. And we'll take a moment, you know, to pray or reflect on the, the beautiful day while that train passes by. If we're all singing or praying when a train comes past, We'll keep singing, we'll keep praying, and hopefully we'll come out on the other side all together there. It's a good metaphor for life. Um, also, just a note you'll see as you come in, there are uh, giving envelopes. If you made a pledge either for the regular uh, stewardship campaign or for the mortgage campaign, you can pick them up there. So. Actually, everyone who gives regularly gets one, whether they pledge or not. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Everybody who gives regularly, that, that is your bonus. You get a, a set of giving envelopes. Thank you, Sally. Um, are there any other announcements for the good of the body? All right, would you join with me in a moment of prayer? God of peace and love, thank you for this day. Thank you for the chance to gather together to worship you. We ask that you bless this worship service, that it might be holy and pleasing to you, and nourishing to us. We pray this all in your son's name. Amen. Would you please stand for our opening hymn number 193, That Easter Day.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. lesson is from the book of Acts. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is from Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your Lord. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 4 responsibly by half verse. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. Defend me, please, when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me to hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. I call upon the Lord, and he will hear me. Tremble then, and do not sin. Keep your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices, and fill your cup to the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. 
You have put gladness in my heart. More than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. Only you, Lord, make me well and safe. The second lesson is from John, first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand to sing hymn number 738, Day of Delight and Beauty.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. For you today in the name of God, who is known to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Two men who were best friends went on a journey through the desert together. As they walked and walked in the heat, their patience with one another began to wear a little thin, and the two friends started to argue about nothing in particular. One man got so heated, so worked up, that he shoved his friend in anger, and his friend fell to the ground. The fallen man sat there for a minute, stunned, and then he shook his finger and began to write in the sand. He wrote, today, my best friend pushed me to the ground. The man who was still standing saw his deed written in the sand and felt guilty, so he, he walked over to his friend, apologized, and helped him up. His friend accepted the apology, and the two men continued on their journey through the desert. Before long, the two men came to an oasis. They decided after their long hike that they would go for a little swim in the pool at the oasis. While they were swimming though, the man who had been pushed down got his foot tangled in the underwater plants. He found that he couldn't come up for air. Starting to drown, he began to flail his arms. Thankfully, his friend saw the flailing quickly dove down, untangled his friend's foot from the weeds and brought him up to the surface. Well, the man who had nearly drowned made his way over to the shore, caught his breath for a few seconds, and then he took a pebble from the shore and he wrote on the rocky ground, today my best friend saved my life. The other man, the man who had both pushed his friend and then had saved his friend, saw the writing and asked, why? Why are you writing these things down, first in the sand and then in rock? His friend replied, when someone hurts you, you should write the deed in sand, where the winds of forgiveness can erase it. But when somebody does good for you, 
engrave it in stone so that the memory of the kind act lasts forever. The wind of forgiveness, a phrase that I like. Today we hear Jesus talk to his disciples about forgiveness a little bit. We hear how Jesus suddenly appears in the room where his disciples are. As Jesus does, he wishes them peace. He shows them his scars. And then to prove that he's not a ghost, Jesus eats a piece of fish because a, a ghost wouldn't be able to eat. And then Jesus gets to the plan from here on out. Jesus says repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed to all nations. And I think that is the crux of the message that his disciples are supposed to share. Repent and forgive. It's kind of the, the practical version of love God with all your heart, soul, and mind and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Repent and forgive. Repent, in other words, when you mess up, acknowledge that you've messed up, whether to God or to the person you hurt, and then try to do better. And forgive when others mess up or hurt you, let go of any resentment or anger. So that's the message the disciples are tasked with carrying into the world. We get a little glimpse of how that goes in our reading from Acts, believe it or not. So you might know that Luke wrote his gospel, Gospel of Luke, and then Luke wrote a sequel, not about Jesus's life, but about the early church. What happens after Jesus is resurrected and then ascends into heaven. And that sequel is the Acts of the Apostles. So we hear this story about Peter today. And if you'd like, you can kind of follow along in your bulletin. I'll talk about it just, just a little bit. We start off our Acts story actually in the middle of the story. We hear that Peter's addressing a crowd, but we don't know why. Now what just happened immediately before our reading starts, Peter and John, two apostles, had just healed a man who was unable to walk from birth. Peter said to this man, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And the man did. Then Peter has the crowd's attention and so he launches into this speech, talks about the power of the name of Jesus. Peter's saying, it's not me that did this, it's Jesus who did it. And then, then Peter's speech gets a little bit harsh, doesn't it? Gets a little bit angry. And this is one of those sections of the Bible, I wish we, wish we had an audio recording of it, so that we could get his tone of voice. Instead, all we have are the words. Peter blames the crowd, points out to them, it's because of you that Jesus was killed. And then, to his credit, Peter does end by saying, I know you acted in ignorance, so repent and you will be forgiven. So Peter, maybe, maybe he's still working on that process of forgiveness in his own heart, but he is at least delivering this message, repent and forgive. Repent and forgive. I think what Peter demonstrates for us at least something that I've mentioned before, but I think it's worth mentioning again. Forgiveness can be a process. We know we're supposed to forgive people, but sometimes it's tough to just say, okay, I forgive you. It can take days, weeks, months, even years to really forgive somebody who has hurt us deeply. And that's okay. If Peter struggled with it too, I think it's okay if you and I do as well. I think when it comes to forgiving people, there's also a tendency that we have, or maybe just I have, is we forgive people maybe 95% of the way. You know, we're trying our hardest, but we don't want to let go completely because if that person should hurt us again, we want to be on our guard. I do think, though, that we are called, as people of faith, to forgive 100%. Doesn't mean we need to forget what happened, doesn't mean we can't learn from what happened, but we are called to let go of any anger or resentment, resentment we might hold on to. 
And if we can do that, then we can start to understand the idea of grace. The grace and the patience that God has for us. I will say also on the topic of forgiveness, the call here is to forgive others, but there is also a call to forgive ourselves. Sometimes we can be our own harshest critics. Sometimes we might have an exchange or a conversation, and then we play that conversation in our head over and over and over again, wondering what should I have said? What could I have said differently? We might even beat ourselves up a little bit. But this call to forgiveness is not only forgiving others, it is being gentle with ourselves once we have repented, once we have acknowledged what we have done wrong. So repent and forgive are the words for us today. Turn from unhealthy ways, forgive others, and forgive yourself. They're good rules for living with others, and they're good rules for living with God. I'll close today by sharing a quote from Mahatma Gandhi. I've shared this before, but who doesn't love hearing a quote from Gandhi? This is a man who knew something about forgiveness and about being wrong. Gandhi is quoted as saying, the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is an attribute of the strong. Be strong today, forgive others, and forgive yourself. Amen. Friends, would you please stand and let us reaffirm our faith by saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. God of life, we praise you and we lift our prayers to you this day. Open our lips, O oh Lord. Let our mouths proclaim your praise. We pray for our hurting world that we may work for the unity of all people, that Christ's body may be one. Open our lips, O oh Lord. Let our mouths proclaim your praise. We pray for those in positions of power that they might use their authority wisely and justly to shape our peaceful world. Open our lips, O Lord. Let our mouths proclaim your praise. We pray for all who look for hope in the Easter message. 
all who journey from illness to health, from despair to hope, from grief to consolation, from oppression to freedom, from loneliness to love. Open our lips, O Lord. Let our mouths proclaim your praise. We give thanks for your creation that you have blessed us with. Help us to care for the natural world so that it can be enjoyed by our sisters and brothers and those who come after us. Open our lips, O Lord. Let our mouths proclaim your praise. We pray for all who have died that they may share with joy in Jesus' resurrection. Open our lips, O Lord. Let our mouths proclaim your praise. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Oh, Let you share a sign of peace with the folks around you. Wave, peace sign, and shake our hearts. Our friends, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Could be seated for the offertory.
service continues with a great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. So chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with Gabriel and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please be seated for communion. I will bring the bread to you at your seat.
those of you who are joining us from home, you'll find there is the prayer of spiritual communion on page 18. I invite you to say that at this time since you aren't able to be with us uh, physically for communion. <laughs> for all of us here, would you please stand and let us say together the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Would you please join us in our closing hymn number 210, The Day of Resurrection. Be ready to send everybody out. Repeat after me, please. Go in peace. To love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.